Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this uh, BAFTA Life and Pictures with Tim Burton. I'd first of all like to thank our sponsors, Deutsche Bank, for making the whole evening possible. They have a very active involvement in the arts, including other projects like the Freeze Art Fair. And also, they support school children being able to have access to Shakespeare via the Globe Theatre. And they're very happy to add this BAFTA Life and Pictures strand to their other activities. <laughs> Burton, welcome to your Life in Pictures. Uh, am I dead? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but okay. we're, we're going to start conventionally enough where yeah. we tend to. Uh, at the beginning, you obviously started to watch films really early on. Uh, in movie theatres or on television? Both. Um, you know, back when I was growing up, there was, you know, they still had drive-ins. There was like three drive-ins in Burbank, which was great. And the, there was a theatre called the Cornell Theatre, which was amazing because... It was a it was kind of a rundown theater, but they would show like triple features. You could see like three movies for fifty cents. So and they were always a strange like mixture of things. It'd be like a, a Vincent Price, Roger Corman movie, a Scream, Blackula Scream, and mm -hmm. Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde, and you know like Godzilla movies, Japanese science fiction movies. It was a strange like they just mix up the weirdest um, kind of groupings of films, but that's, that's probably the main theater I went to because it was cheap and it was three movies. When did you start to make your first home movies? Well, early on. I mean, like most kids, you know, you're just kind of, it's like a science project. You're playing around making little Super 8 films just for fun. And um, it wasn't until like I got la later in school, I wasn't a very good student, so I would make these films and like I remember I was supposed to read a book on Houdini that was about that and I, I was not a reader. I, unfortunately that was one part of the growing up in this sort of television generation. I wasn't, didn't read as much as I probably should have or would have liked to have got most of it through film. So I did a little short film, me as Houdini escaping from a train track or a, a, you know, a, swimming pool and uh, you know had fun doing it and got a, an A you know a great grade so I found it was a great way of getting a good grade with and having fun at the same time so that kind of got me into it although I never really thought I would ever become doing that I, I think I got I was interested in animation I think that's where I, I put my focus early on <laughs> And something that had been sort of a personal enthusiasm of yours. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up as a kid watching the, the TV show, but the thing that excited me was the opportunity to try to do something which, I, that, you know, more of a darker comic, which that, you know most comics were always perceived as as light, you know, kind of things. And so, I felt that that was a, you know, an interesting new challenge that, you know. They, it was, you know, and, and I mean, the studio was for, they, I think they were for that approach. They, they were still nervous, because I think they always felt with me, it's like, you know, it, it, too dark, it's too dark, it's too dark, and, you know, now it looks like, you know, an ice capade, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> compared to the way things have gone, you know, so I mean, but at the time, you know, at the time it was perceived as a little... You know, but you set Batman dark. off on that trajectory. <laughs> well, but, but, but also the people got worried too because they thought with Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. like, oh, he's going to make it. It's like going to be like a joke. It's going to be like, you know, like the comic. You know, it's going to be like the TV show because he's a comedian and stuff. And, and the th you know, I, I picked him because I just felt, you know, I was looking at a lot of like, you know, real tough looking guy, you know, kind of ac traditional action star kind of people. And it just felt like, well, you look at him, you know, and he, you know, he kind of needs to dress up like a bat because he's not, doesn't look like, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, a big tough guy, and he's got kind of crazy eyes. And I, so, I, you know, I, I knew, even though there was a lot of uh, criticism before it came out that, that, that we're gonna make a joke of it, I mean, sort of knew that, we, that, that that wasn't the goal. And they were immediately keen for you to do the next one as well? Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. After the second one, they weren't so keen on me. <laughs> <laughs> and Sleepy Hollow is, is uh, a lovely kind of blend of a classic American story, the Headless Horseman story, but also a real hammer horror 
Maybe yeah. Well, that's well. the thing. In America, I mean, in this country and other countries, there's a rich history of those kinds of stories. And America, there's not many. You know, that that was one that I recall. And 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 and. But it also just felt very close to me. The idea of kind of the hammer kind of atmosphere and and, you know, it, it was fun. You know, we we did a lot of you know probably the most extreme like forced perspective stuff. I mean, there was not a lot of digital effects or anything. We, you know, did a lot of it in the, in the you know, pretty small stages at Leavesden. So forest and, you know, full gallop horse riding on a, on a sound stage and things. So it, you know, a lot of forced perspective things. And, and so it was, it, was, it was a real, you know, from from that side of it was a lot of fun to do and, and you know just being in that environment kind of the hammer-esque environment for me was you know a, kind of a dream for me. Do you get that feeling with films that you think oh I, I haven't done this kind of I mean are there ever elements or do you think did you like to do no, what well, you know? People keep you know I guess people think I kind of do the same but it's like my drawing it's like I, it's hard for me to change like if somebody said change your drawing style it would be hard for me I don't really think about a style or anything so I just always kind of do things that I, that in that intrigue me and you know like I like I grew up on on horror movies or monster movies but I've never really made a scary movie um, you know but I, I I actually wasn't scared by any of those movies so I, I, it probably makes sense why but um, but there were scary moments certainly scary moments in Sleepy Hollow yeah. Not for me. <laughs> well, you knew what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, man. No, but my, I mean, I used my parents said I used to when I was like three years old. I I would watch these movies and never be scared at all. I mean, did you never had nightmares or didn't no, do any? Well, of that? no, but normal, you know, like real life stuff. You know, yeah. like going to school or sure. yeah. having <laughs> dinner with my parents or <laughs> going to a relative's house. You know. The, <laughs> Real nightmares. Um, and there is, of course, an element of music in a lot of your films, and quite often musical numbers. Obviously, Nightmare had a lot of music, and some music in Charlie, and then, you know, I, I'd always, Sweeney Todd was probably my favorite musical, so that was a real joy to do. I loved doing that. And so, yeah, I mean, it is important. But of course, in doing Sweeney Todd, you're taking um, not just a musical, you're taking what many people consider to be an opera, you know, being on in the Royal Opera House here. Yeah, that didn't go, that, they should have seen that meeting. Uh, <laughs> do a musical with lots of blood with nobody that's ever sang before, doing Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> yeah. so. But presumably, but even before you yeah, start any of that, Stephen Sondheim is on board, so that's Yeah, helps. no, I mean, he was great. I, honestly, because, I, um, you know, he just, he just let us do it, and, and uh, you know, it was a big thing for us. I think it's for him. It's a really important musical for him, and he was really cool about you know letting people that hadn't sang before do probably one of the hardest musicals to to do, and so uh, you know, he just gave us support. I mean, I I did admit I while he was watching the movie for the first time, I definitely went down to the pub with my music editor <laughs> before because I couldn't you know but when he saw you know he was really great about it which which obviously meant a whole lot because uh, you know I don't think I'd ever been so scared showing somebody a movie as showing him <laughs> idea that feels to you that absolutely will be a runner as a film? I don't, <laughs> don't really know. I mean, I, honestly, I, I feel like from the beginning, every movie I've ever worked on could go either way. I'm surprised if it's a failure. I'm surprised if it's a success. I, I feel like, um, you know, I think that when I get into trouble sometimes, and it's happened on a fair amount of movies, is where sometimes the studio will want to do a movie, and I'm excited about it, and there's, you know, you have a momentum going, and sometimes you get involved and, and, and get before the script's quite ready or quite there, and it kind of becomes like a moving train, and so that's happened a few times, and I, I try to uh, uh, not fall into that again because you know oftentimes you know people can be working on a project for 10 years then all of a sudden the timing okay now is the time and so it's it's a lot of it has to do with timing and making sure that the elements are there but every film I've done I've wanted to do kind of there's something been something in it that I've 
that's intrigued me or, you, you know, that's made me want to do it. And Tim Burton, thank you very much. Thank you very much.